Hello everyone, this episode is inspired by a comment from Jennifer, feedbacking the video that I made about the children of cult. I asked Jennifer for a permission to quote her message and she allowed me. Some points in your video, the children of cults, are factually incorrect. Living in the United States myself, I can tell you that reporting anyone to the police is mostly a dangerous decision. The police officers and the judicial system are programmed to see narcissists as benevolent, and anyone pointing a finger at them is suspect. The socio-economic hierarchy here is very strong, and only on the surface are we not considered a third world country. But in reality, you could not realistically call out landowners, civil servants, people respected in the community, etc unless you are well educated and ready to take on and navigate the legal system and even then it is an off-field battle. Thank you Jennifer for your message and for sharing your insight about the American society with me. I agree with what you say here. However, when I made that statement, it was in the context of reference. It was in comparison with systems where the judicial system does not declare or even aspire to respect the rule of law, but it can even systematically advantage a certain religion over another or agenda over another. Now, when it comes to the United States, I agree with you, the whole world is witnessing the collapse of the ethical code of the American society. What you describe here about the system being preconditionally biased for the favor of officers and bureaucrats, this is a symptom of that collapse because preconditioned power has always been abused and self-destructive. That's what we call the Nero syndrome. I'm sure you know the story. Now, when I speak about the collapse, it doesn't happen in a month, but it happens through a painfully gradual transformation that might last decades or even centuries. But most people can only perceive the inconvenient symptoms of recession, dysfunctionality of the system, and unnecessary bureaucracy, for those who can see beyond physicality, this might actually be spectacular to witness this universal shift and the direct connection between demoralization of the spirit and the level of performance and functionality. On one hand, we witness the historical civilizational decay. On the other hand, those who see would detect a historical opportunity for fundamental change, personal and social. I know that I'm dedicating this episode for the social theme, but also in our personal lives, there are many people that have not detected the shift yet. And if they do, they might be able to heal the past and convert their pain into wealth. If you'd like to know more about what I mean, you can go on my website and listen to the episode, the podcast episode that I made about, it's called um, Baby Elephant. It's for free, you can just listen to it. Anyway, when I speak about the US in any video, it's not because it's the ideal system today, but because it was the most successful system that our adult generations have witnessed. Of course, this legacy is coming to an end. And the new generations will have a different conception of this whole thing. However, I'm not American and I will not be the one who's going to criticize the American society from outside. But as a human being who cares about the evolution of humanity, I'm looking forward to witnessing that civilization where its golden age wouldn't last only a couple of decades or centuries, but the connection with the divine code would allow it to deliver that spiritual wealth and application of the knowledge also to the next generations without mutation of the knowledge or abuse of power. In the past, we talked about the journey of civilizations from birth to decay. In the beginning, the pioneers or the fathers that write their constitutions or their code not because they are sitting and intellectualizing and philosophizing about life, but because they went through a lot of pain and wars and decay and bloodshed that they learned from their past. So they wouldn't want to experience the same pain again. But after the age of safe trade and wealth, where people grow up in wealthy environments, they take it for granted. There's no appreciation or gratitude 
And so they bring the age of decadence where their sense of entitlement grows arrogant and unjustified. So they feel as if they were victims, violated and angry because someone says no, or because the others refuse to sacrifice themselves for the whims of those who feel entitled. That's why they feel offended, not because they were actually offended. Donald Trump is only a representation of that spirit. He's both a symptom and also a side effect, but not a cause. For decades, the liberal media and the leftist artists of Hollywood made films that created that sense of American superiority. Trump has absorbed that toxic art just like any average citizen. The thing is that when one can't back up their sense of entitlement with entitlement, one would abuse. And when one can't back up their sense of superiority with superiority, one would be heading a cliff on high speed while thinking he's heading glory. Now, in order for them to abuse legally, narcissists need bureaucrats, people who execute without objection, without critical thinking, like soldiers, police officers, low rank bankers. No wonder that bureaucrats see them as benevolent. They must see them so in order to restore some of their dignity because they work for them. They are dependent on them to put food on the table. They are already in a cycle of slavery where they live in fear of that day where they can't pay the mortgage or the insurance or pay the luxuries for their kids just like the neighbor's kids. Fears and desires the ultimate programming code. Now, it's important to disclaim that I'm not criticizing bureaucrats in general because any system needs to be sustained and maintained also by executives. But I speak here only about those who enable abuse of power for carrots. And in order for those bureaucrats to execute without critical thinking and without anyone daring to question their sanity, they're not only rewarded by guaranteed compensation and benefits, but also by constant machinery image polishing in the media, in films, in ceremonies, regardless of how corrupt and dysfunctional or abusive they might be. That's why there are so many films that glorify the character of the soldier and the policeman. And even when we see a corrupt police officer in a film, that would come with a justification of that corruption with slow motion and romantic music in the background with showing some memories of the childhood to accept his violation or to tolerate where he comes from and how he does things to understand why he does things in a certain way or a soldier that feels sad for accidentally killing a boy in the battlefield so his beautiful girlfriend rewards him with passionate and compassionate sex in order to reduce his painful sense of guilt. Or a corrupt policeman who needs to deal with criminals, so he needs sometimes to bend the law and to bend the rules and go above the law, killing tens of people in order to save one. And gets applauded for that. How kinky and perverted that is. So we end up not only accepting corrupt officers, but also reframing their corruption as necessary, as patriotic, as heroic. It's normal that giving anyone too much power, they would abuse it. And in case you are abused by a bureaucrat and you decide to sue them, they are mostly protected by the organization because they represent the organization. And the organization would have endless access to the taxpayer money, financing their lawyers, while the taxpayer himself can't afford a lawyer. When there's a party in any society that has been systematically advantaged, any attempt to take their privileges away from them would be perceived as an offense. Now, regardless of the social transformation, like we always say, the journey is personal. I might have no access to the collective mind and I might not be able to control many things, but I can make my best to control my response and to make sure that I don't act like an abusive bureaucrat when I can. I know so many people that were abused or like some women that were abused by their husbands 
and they suffered a lot and they were looking for ways how to raise awareness of that. But when they were on the powerful side, they behaved worse than their abusers. I know that the system is corrupt and that it's on its highway to self-destruction. But if we were genuinely solution-oriented before trying to find solutions in places where we have no control over, we can start by healing our personal lives. Am I sovereign enough to sustain my life without needing to depend on others emotionally and financially? If no, this would be a high priority. Am I healthy enough within the range of what I can control? If no, this is a high priority. Someone who smokes cigarettes is not in position yet to talk about healing society, addiction to drugs, to alcohol, and many other health disturbances that are in the range of the individual's control. If we can't take control over what we should be able to take control of, it would be senseless to talk about controlling what is outside the range. And after being the best version of myself, I might be able to inspire others to be part of that beauty and to join that wind of change. Now, perhaps I would not be able to inspire the masses of the American society because I have my accent, some would have their prejudices, but the insiders who really care about their societies are now needed the most to stop the decay because gradually and slowly it's becoming irreversible. I hope I could explain myself better. Thank you, Jennifer, for this message. Thank you, everyone, for staying with me. I'm Shreddy Jabarin. Ciao.